Hi everyone, it's me, Tim, and today I want to talk about companions. I've got a lot of questions about companions and how I feel like they should be used in RPGs, and I don't have a, a simple answer, which is why I put off answering this for such a long time, and I've gotten so many quest different questions from different people that I will try to cover them all in this one video. So it's it covers whether or not I think companions should be in games and how many there should be and are they controllable and what what's their involvement in the quest line and blah, blah, blah. So let's just dive in. <laughs> There's a lot of topics here. Companions are a, a nuanced topic. So companions, let's start with whether or not they're controllable. In general, in isometric games, I lean towards them being controllable. That once they enter the party, yes, you control them. Didn't do that in Fallout, but after or Arcanum. But after I did it in Temple, I kind of liked that the player had that kind of agency because it's it it doesn't feel good when you die and you wish someone in your party had just done one thing different. However, in first person for a lot of different reasons. I prefer first person games not to have controllable companions. Not the least of which is it's really hard to make a control scheme that feels good with that. Plus, if you're especially if you're playing real time, you've got, you're going to have to either pause to issue orders. It's just it's a lot harder. Now, if you're going to do controllable companions, then you have to answer the question of, is there now still a main player in the party? And by main player, I'm like, is there a character that represents the player, a player character? Or is the entire party the player character? In Temple, the entire party, um, well, the, the ones you made, not the NPCs you recruited, the four that you made, are the player character. If any one of them is alive, the game continues. In other games, the there's a main player character, and then the companions come on, whether they're they're controllable or not, are not the main character. It gets confusing in games where the player character is just one of a party of fully controllable companions, and then somehow they're special. But I like that, and here's why. I like for one of the characters in your party to be you. That's who you're thinking of as you. And you made them. You created them. All their attributes and their skills and their perks and anything that goes into them, and that's you. So I like it where that's that, that character's special in a couple ways. One, if you die, it's game over. And two, when you talk to people, you're the one doing the talking. Yes, you can get charisma, speech-based companions. They assist your talking. And I'll talk about that. They're not going to, though, do the talking. Every, you're the one who's doing it. In other words, think of the main player character as the one who drives the main story. You might be the chosen one. You might have just fallen into a storyline. But you're the one. That way you can swap companions in and out. But you can't swap the main player character in and out. That's what makes them special. So... How many of these companions do I like having? There's how many you have in the party versus how many that exist. I prefer to have two to four companions that you can add into the party. <laughs> Thanks, Windows. I prefer to have two to four companions that you add into the party but three to six that you can pick from. And the reason I like doing this is I like to have a wide range of companions and I get to talk about this in terms of what they add to the game and both gameplay and narrative. But you can't have all of them at once for a few reasons. One, I like that, that you have to choose. And I also like that you don't have this, like I don't want you to have eight or 10 things you're controlling in combat at once. And by the way, once you go that way, you're pretty much guaranteeing you're going to have to be turn-based. It is easier, I think, to have companions in a turn-based game because it's their turn. Now I do the companion. You can do it in real time with pause, but a lot of them are going to be running around doing 
the AI what the AI thinks is best, and then you occasionally intervene and say, no, do this. And it gets really complicated when you try to do that with like 8, 10, 15 characters. So then how many I like also depends on the traits I want to give. Usually what I like to do with companions is gameplay-wise, they represent a mechanic archetype. So you have a really good melee combat guy or a really good maged combat woman or you have a really good sorceress or you have a really good charisma guy. They're, they're basically, you, you know when you meet them, this is how they would be useful in my party. This is how they can fill in gaps. I need a healer. I need a tank. I need a crowd control. I need a face. So you meet these people, they represent an archetype. Now, this gets us over to the narrative side of things, which puts us into quest lines, basically companion quest lines. So companions usually come with their own quest line of some issue they're trying to resolve or something they were trying to do when you met them and they still want to get it done even after they met you and you can help them with theirs the same way they're helping you with yours. And this is fun. What I think about companion quests is they are side quests in the world that explore the world, not the main quest. So companions don't come along and go, oh, you're killing the bad guy? I also want to kill the bad guy. I don't like that because that's that's your thing. I like side quests that are like, I'm trying to recover this lost crown for my people. If you help me do that, I'll help you take down the bad guy. That's more interesting because now you find out about this whole faction the problems they're having, their place in the world. You learn more about the world just by having this companion in the party. And that's what I love companions can do. As part of their narrative, I love when companions talk with each other and interject in dialogues the player have or just make barks when they enter into areas because that's a great way of delivering lore without it feeling like a big lore hammer hitting you. Like, oh, you have to read this book or oh, you have to wade through 10 nodes of dialogue that you can't escape from. Companions can easily add background lore into your world without it feeling heavy-handed. So I like them to do that, but that means there's this uh, constant tension between companions trying to add narrative, you know, lore, dialogue, personality to the game and their gameplay needs. The fact that, well, this person was added because I really needed a good melee tank. And It's, it's interesting because you often have to tell the narrative people this is what this is the role they're filling as a part a, a part of the party. Make sure that narrative doesn't conflict with this. If you end up saying this is our really powerful melee tank and the narrative person says, well, they're, they were raised by pacifist monks and they don't like using weapons and they're afraid of monsters and all this. It's like, this is going to be a hard sell, as this is my main melee tank. So these have to work together. There's a side thing here. I know a lot of people, even people on this channel, are really into romancing companions. I just never got into that because it strikes me as, first of all, in a lot of games it feels like a weird add-on. It's like, do do do. this person is wanting to do their side quest and they've joined you and all this. And, and by the way, as soon as they get back to camp, they're like, ooh, you're hot. Also, to make it work with no matter how what kind of player character you've made, the male companions have to hit on you, the female companions have to hit on you, the different race races that the companions can be have to hit on you. So if there's a lizard man and there's a demon and whatever, they all hit on you. And it just makes the world feel like, wow, the world is full of all these really horny people. It's If that's not what I want then I don't want that to be reflected in the companions. So often I'm just go, let's take romance off the table. Or if you really want it, there's one or two of them that are romanceable and we'll try to cover the gamut with them. But the other ones are like, ooh, those guys are, you know, put a sock on it. Anyway, that's how I kind of feel about their quest lines. I want their quest lines to explore the world, not them, not the main quest line. So that's why I like them treated the way they are with no romance. But then the final thing I wanted to talk about was playing without companions. There's a lot of people who don't like getting companions. They find them to be annoying or interruptive or disruptive to how they're seeing their gameplay going. So I try to do the same rules for companions that I do for side quests. And that is 
A, the main storyline is, is completable without any companions. None of them are required. None of them have a skill or an item that you absolutely need to do the main story quest. I'm not saying the main storyline will be easier without them. I mean, if you have a lot of companions, that's a lot of extra damage output. That's a lot of extra meat shields out there. But you should be able to finish the main storyline without a single companion, without ever picking up a companion. Maybe without even talking to them. Which means they don't have to be marked as essential. You can come across somebody who may want to join your party and you can just kill them instead. That's what I like. The other thing I, I treat them with side quests is if if you want to play without a companion, they shouldn't come across as you feeling like you're getting a lesser experience without doing it. Um, and no matter what kind of build you're playing, you should meet companions that that do compliment you. If, if there's a bunch of just melee tanks out there and you're a melee tank, you may feel like you don't want a companion because there's nobody who compliments your skill. So you should always run into companions that you'd want to get that are really complimentary to your skill set. But you should never feel like you have to get them. And... Because of that, I feel like games where there's a companion you have to pick up even for a short time, they're forced into your party or whatever, I tend not to like those. Um, and I treat this as different than games like Temple where y you know, you're told you have to make four player characters because the game is balanced for four. I will tell you, though, it is really hard to balance a game where companions are optional and you can have a lot of them. We did two in the Outer Worlds because if we had made it three or four, it's really hard to make a game that's balanced where one person may be playing solo and the other person may be one in a party of five where there's four companions. So the more companions you allow, the harder it is to balance if you want to let them choose companions. Now, if you're going to force companions into the party, then okay. You know, if, it, if, if by the time the player leaves a certain area, there's got to be, they got to have a full party of four or five, much easier to balance. So think about that if you're putting companions in your game. In fact, I think that may be all my things. So to recap, whether they're controllable depends on the game type, isometric versus first person, turn-based versus real time, how many is variable, uh, how they in, are interact with the quest line and what, versus what kind of traits they have. And then I like to have the option that you can play solo and you don't need any companions at all. So that's, I think, all of my high level thoughts on companions so you can see it varies by game but in general i have very consistent thoughts that i've created over time so some of my earlier games don't quite meet this if i were to redo them today i might do them a little differently but that's how i think about companions now so i hope this answers all of the companion questions